Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with another uh, Sunday live stream, our Beer Money Sundays. So, uh, you know, I got mine. I hope you got yours wherever you're at, uh, whether it's an adult beverage or not. Just uh, thank you for being here. I, I love doing these these Sunday live streams, uh, just a, a way to, to con connect with all you out there in the Bowtie Nation. A little bit more informal, get to take off my tie and uh, and just you know, have a good conversation about where the market's going, uh, why it's been so crazy lately, and uh, and what you can do to, to be a better investor. So again, thank you for being here. Got a great uh, a great episode for you today. After last week's look at uh, you know that one chart in FactSet Research, after last week's live stream where we looked at you know what analysts are expecting for returns. Uh, you know, over the next year, got a lot of questions uh, and a lot of people asking for a deeper review of some of my favorite charts from that resource. So, you know, all you out there in the Bowtie Nation know that uh, facts that that's probably my single best uh, best resource for looking at stocks, looking at earnings, and and where that long term earnings picture is. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, I wanted to I wanted to use this week to uh, to just go go over uh, some of those uh, some some of those important charts how you use them and uh, you know how you maybe make a little bit better investing decisions. Uh, make sure you stick around though because the end of the video, before we get to our question and answer uh, section, so probably usually around 30 minutes is what it, it takes to, uh, to get through this first topic, uh, I'm gonna talk about why uh, you know this week, this coming week, could be exceptionally bad for stocks. I mean, it's already been pretty bad. NASDAQ was down 10% uh, you know, in that late February sell-off, uh, has rebounded about 6% from there. But uh, we've got a lot of uh, points, a lot of events this week that could actually be a, an inflection point for stocks. You know, it's uh, a lot of it to do uh, around, revolving around those interest rates and, and why I think those could jump higher this week and some warning signs. So make sure you check that out towards the end of the uh, the video. It's going to be about 30 minutes in, um, you know, after we get over these uh, this first topic, and then we'll be hitting that Q and A section as well. So I uh, see a lot of people here in the chat, uh, you know, from, uh, from see New York, New Jersey, uh, Illinois, the UK, uh, Ohio. Thanks for being here again. I love seeing you know everybody everybody coming in from from all over the world. Uh, they're out there in the Bowtie Nation, tuning in from Ireland. Awesome, cool. So. Uh, I want to get started. Uh, I want to personally invite all of you to, to get the uh, the daily bow tie. It's our free market uh, update newsletter. It goes out 9 p.m. the night before the markets open every day, so it uh, gives you time to, to think about you know what your investments are doing and, and where they might go. Uh, it's completely free. Just something I wanted to start doing this year and, and provide to to all of you out there uh, out there in the nation. So I left a, uh, a link in the live chat there. I'll also leave one in the description below if you want to check that out. Sign up. Uh, it's completely free, and, and it's going to go over a lot of the stock market, the news, and the trends and the strategies that, that we talk about here on the channel. And then, of course, towards the end of the video, we'll we'll do that uh, question and answer. Love talking to to everyone that, out there in the nation, and uh, you know, just getting that getting a little bit closer connection than what we can get in regular videos. So I want to get started there. Uh, if you didn't check out last week's videos, we got uh, a couple videos out. The space stocks, you know, the space exploration stocks that are really starting to heat up, especially ahead of uh, the ARK Invest space uh, exploration ETF that's coming out probably, uh, you know, end of this month, maybe it, most likely in April. They filed their SEC registration in January. So that means a, a couple of months and they'll be able to uh, launch that fund. And they're going to be buying, uh, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, you know, maybe even billions of dollars. I think their smallest fund is like $1.2 billion. Uh, so that means, you know, an extra billion dollars is going to be hitting into a lot of these space stocks. And uh, so now is probably the time to, uh, to pick some of those up uh, ahead of, of uh, ARK Invest investing in those. Also talked about Bitcoin versus Ethereum on Friday. Check that out. Uh, all you out there in the nation know I've, I've invested off and on in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in the past few years. Uh, just now, just starting to get more of a longer term investment thesis on it and uh, really looking at, okay, so which is going to be the, the better investment going forward, Bitcoin versus Ethereum. This next week, got some uh, great videos for you. VR stocks to buy, virtual reality, uh, alternate or augmented reality stocks coming at you. Uh, tomorrow's video, uh, looking at those ARK Invest big ideas, trends, and how uh, you know just the VR headset and that hardware opportunity alone, ARK Invest estimates could be a $350 billion opportunity over the next three years, just to 2025. So uh, it's going to be a really interesting opportunity, uh, and I wanted to highlight some of the stocks in that uh, in that theme. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to be looking at some cannabis penny stocks. 
uh, some penny stocks that I've been following in that cannabis theme, in the in the medical marijuana and the uh, the legalization theme. So so make sure you check those out. Um, I want to get to uh, to this week's topic because again, this is uh, probably my single favorite uh, research resource uh, or tool. You know that fact set earnings and some of these charts can really help you figure out where your investments are going uh, and, and how to make those better decisions. So we're going to head on over to uh, to Google, and I just want to show uh, you know for those of you that uh, haven't heard me talk about uh, fact set till your heads explode already because I talk about it constantly. I want to show you how to find this. So you go to Google and you type in fact set earnings insight. Okay. So we'll click there, fact set earnings insight, and it's almost always going to be this first, uh, this first, you know, this first result here, and it'll be a PDF. Okay, so you'll see fact set earnings insight key metrics. It'll be a PDF, and uh, and if you click through, then we'll use. Uh, it's going to look like this. We we'll use the one that I've already got loaded up, and basically this is just a, a biweekly report or poll that fact set earnings insight that fact set puts out. Uh, they pull all the analysts, a lot of the analysts that have their uh, their price targets and and uh, and estimates on uh, S and P 500 companies. Okay, so these are the 500 largest companies in the U.S. on that S and P 500 index, uh, and so they track you know where earnings are, where earnings are going, and those analyst expectations for those. Right, uh, you know you know that uh, over the short term, three months, four months, even up to a year. It's investor sentiment, right? Investor sentiment, optimism, enthusiasm, that's gonna drive stocks and stock prices. Over the longer term though, you have to have an idea of where earnings are going. You know, over the lo- year longer period, uh, and, and even in, in the some, sometimes in the shorter periods, especially during earnings seasons when the companies are reporting these earnings, uh, you have to have an idea of where those earnings are going uh, and how they might surprise the market, right? Because, you know, this is just going to show you what analysts are expecting out of earnings, what investors are expecting out of earnings for those companies. Uh, and then you look at this, you use this in some of these charts that we'll talk about, and uh, and you say, okay, you know, where's the market wrong? Where is the consensus wrong, uh, whether higher or lower on these earnings? And, you know, how do I trade in front of that? How do I invest in front of that? So we're going to uh, we're going to scroll through here, and I'm going to show you, uh, you know, where to look for some of these charts. Some of the most important charts. There's a lot of great information on here, but we're going to just going to focus on just a, a few of the things, uh, a few of the things that I like. I like to look at. So we'll we'll scroll through, and uh, you know, you can you can check this out. They always have like a topic of the week, which is really interesting. Uh, you know, this this last uh, this last week was you know where analysts are more, most optimistic on ratings for S and P 500 companies. Uh, they had another topic, I believe, which was, you know, uh, how the how the coronavirus has really changed earnings in a lot of these industries. So you can check that out. Uh, we're going to go though to, and they'll always review the uh, the most current uh, earnings seasons results. We're actually going to scroll down to page 16 of this one, and I'm going to show you this this first chart. Uh, and this is probably one of the uh, one of the more important ones that I that I watch. Um, okay, so actually it's it's 17 here. This is the net profit margin, right? Okay, so this is this is going to show us by sector. So you know you've got those 11 sectors, stock sectors of the economy, uh, those broad groups of uh, of companies in the same in the same niche in the same topic or or uh, you know that that grouping of of industries and their net profit margins. Okay, now net margin is that's just the the net income the income available to shareholders, so that bottom line earnings uh, that a company reports divided by the sales, right? So that is the core, the net profitability. That's how much in, uh, that's how much in of those sales they're converting into profits for investors, okay? So obviously a very important uh, metric to follow, that profit margin, that net profit margin. And what this is gonna show you here, let's just make sure I can, uh, okay, so we're seeing it there. Uh, and what this is going to show you, this one is the blue line is the uh, the Q4. So uh, you know the most recent quarter's net margins, profit margins for these uh, the stocks in these sectors. The gray line, which might be a little bit harder to see here, but it's a gray line on the right of that blue line, is the Q4 2019. Right. So this is year over year change in those profit margins. Okay. And so obviously, you know, why this is so important is because you know you can get sales growth. Uh, a lot of companies going to be seeing some great sales growth 
uh, over this next year because you know all this money going into uh, into the economy reopening people are getting out and spending so they're gonna have sales growth but if maybe say they see their net profit margins falling so you know maybe they have to hire more people to uh, you know to handle all these sales maybe uh, they see inflation inflation is going to be a huge topic for uh, for the rest of the year uh, so then maybe they see inflation in their input prices the things they have to buy to create their product or uh, you know just uh, other inflation and they're not able to pass that on through higher prices okay so uh, you know going to be a, a huge topic for this year really this is this is one of the things you really have to follow is uh, inflation which companies are able to pass their own inflation so their higher prices for input costs onto their customers you know some companies will be able to do that some companies won't um, you know you've got a lot of uh, uh, consumer staple companies really that uh, you know maybe sell the things that you have to buy anyway so maybe they have a little bit more pricing power and can pass on some of those higher costs to consumers uh, whereas maybe you've got some other uh, you know some other uh, uh, you know, some other industries uh, will use like the uh, the discount retailers, right? Discount clothes, discount uh, uh, foods like Dollar General or something like that. Much more customers are much more price sensitive, right? So if they raise their prices a little bit to cover those higher input costs, customers are going to flee to other to other competitors. Okay, so maybe not quite as much um, uh, pricing pricing power there in those industries. Now, again, what this does though. So they have higher sales growth, but if they have higher inflation and higher operating costs, uh, then then you know their margins are going to go down. Their profitability is going to go down, and this is where you're going to see that. This is where you're going to see in this uh, in this net profit margins uh, graph, right? So here we can just look at you know so uh, so some of the the bigger ones, uh, real estate you know profit margins from uh, up to 35 percent this uh, this last quarter versus 33 percent the year before. So obviously. You know, a good trend there, rising trend. Uh, what you want to pay attention to is the difference here. So you've got these first three, real estate, information technology, and financials. Uh, profit margins are all rising very well, uh, nicely there. Financials, 18.5% profit margin here in this last quarter versus 15.9% there in the uh, you know in in the fourth quarter of 2019 so very strong there and of course we see it in the uh, you know the higher the higher interest rates and the interest rate spread that, that banks are able to charge what you also want to do though is look look at some of these other ones where the profit margin is actually going down so you've got industrials here clear to the right uh, stocks in the industrial sector the companies Quar fourth quarter only getting four and a half percent margin there versus 8.6% in the fourth quarter of 2019. So some of the things that you, you really need to look at this and say, okay, you know, why why is the profitability in the industrial sector falling so fast? And again, here it's because it's because of that inflation. You know, inflation is going to hit those those industrials so much faster uh, because you know you've got the 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 price of the raw materials rises first. And then the uh, the industrials, so the factories and the manufacturers that are using those raw materials, uh, get hit first by that higher inflation. So uh, you know, and so if they're not able to pass those prices, those higher prices for their input goods onto their customers, which would be you know the retailers and a little bit further down in the uh, in the supply chain, then they're going to take a hit on uh, on margins, and that's what we're seeing here. So if you look at this chart, you really got to question, okay. You know what? If the industrials are getting hit already on these higher prices, these high, this higher inflation, and they're not able to pass those uh, those uh, costs on, uh, but they're passing some of it on to uh, to their customers, then where does this hit next? Okay, so so you know if that higher inflation goes through to to real estate, you know one of the big stories last week was how much lumber and uh, and other uh, you know housing costs have have increased over the last year. Lumber prices are, are up like you know high double digits. Uh, and that's going to drive up the price of housing. So how does that affect the real estate sector and these profit margins later on in the year? So just a, definitely a, 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 a chart you want to check out and a chart you want to watch for, uh, you know, for, for uh, following stocks. Next, we're going to uh, come down here to the earnings and revenue growth uh, should be. OK, so here we go. So this is current year S&P 500 earnings growth, uh, current year 2020. And then they've also got the revenue growth 2020. And again, this is, uh, this is, you know, the uh, the the core earnings growth. So the earnings per share of all the companies within each sector here, as well as the uh, the sales growth, right? And it's going to compare it, uh, the expectations for now, 
You know, so this is the current year. This is what analysts expect those stocks and those sectors to report for earnings growth for this entire year. Uh, and, and it's going to compare what what analysts expect now. These blue bars are the today's expectations. The uh, the the sh lighter shaded gray stuff is the uh, bar bars is what their expectations were in the 31st of December. So, you know, change, two months change. Uh, where do analysts see those earnings over this year and those sales over this year versus two months ago? Okay, and again, you want to look at the changes. Okay, so, so you want to look at where those market expectations, where those market, uh, you know, estimates and consensus have gone over the last two months, where you think maybe they're wrong, where, uh, you know, where some of, those, some of those sectors that have been hit hard. Okay, so look at technology. You know, so technology is, is the second uh, second industry here we see. And right now, analysts are expecting technology uh, companies to report 8.1% earnings growth over this next year, over this 2020, uh, versus 4.6% in December. Okay, so obviously, you know, much higher. Uh, analysts are expecting those tech companies to, to report almost double the earnings growth over this next year than they did in December. Okay, and you can compare that to uh, to the revenue growth. Okay, what's uh, so they're expecting 6.4% revenue growth for the quarter. They're expecting tech companies to or revenue growth for for that uh, for that year, and they're expecting those tech companies to be able to leverage that with you know with debt and all that to leverage that up to a little bit over 8% earnings growth. So pretty strong actually. There uh, you got to wonder. Okay, so uh, so you know with the economy uh, rebounding as it is, uh, is that is that ultimate number going to be higher or lower there? Uh, what I would also look at is what I would pay attention to is, yeah, the, the, the sectors that haven't performed as well, like maybe information technology, you know, uh, the, everybody's selling off IT stocks or tech stocks because of those interest rates. But if they do end up posting 8% plus earnings growth this year and 6% 6, 6 plus uh, sales growth, then might that you know help support those shares and might those be better long-term investments and really what the market's giving it credit for right now. Uh, also, you know what's really one of one of the things that's really interesting to me on this chart is uh, healthcare. You know, very first one here. Analysts expect healthcare stocks in the healthcare sector to post the highest earnings growth for this year. Okay, analysts expect 10.6% earnings growth in stocks in that sector for this year. That's uh, and again that's 2020. Uh, for the stocks in the S&P 500 healthcare sector, 10.6%. Uh, and now, you know, if you look at just how the uh, how the the healthcare sector has done over this last two or three months, it's really underperformed a lot of the other sectors. We'll go here, and all you out there in the nation know you. This is a, this is another one of my favorite resources, the Select Sector Spiders uh, Spider Chart or Sector Tracker here. And you can go here. It's at sectorspider.com. You can go here and it's going to show you, you know, how all these uh, sectors, how the stocks in the S&P 500 sectors have done over the, you know, the day, the five days, one month. And if we look here, you know, I've been bullish on, on the healthcare sector for the last few months because I think all those elective uh, surgeries, elective procedures that are really the highest margin procedures, the most, the biggest money makers for these healthcare companies uh, have been put off. You know, they were put off in the pandemic. They were postponed. As those come back, those uh, you know those healthcare companies are going to start making more money, right? So uh, so you're going to see you're going to see higher returns or higher profits and higher higher returns probably from that sector. But if you look out, you know one month uh, healthcare has underperformed uh, about a half percent return there. It's underperformed pretty much every sector other than uh, other than tech and consumer discretionary, right? Those high PE growth stocks, those high uh, high PE stocks that that have been hit by the interest rates uh, over the last. You know, we'll go even further out over the last three months, 1.8% return on stocks in the healthcare sector, far below uh, most of them, you know, below, uh, below pretty much everything other than uh, other than again, those, those high PE stocks, uh, utilities, uh, consumer staples here, which are also yield sensitive. So, you know, what I'm thinking here is uh, looking at this chart, I'm saying, okay, well, you know, analysts expect the earnings to be so much better for healthcare companies, 10.6% earnings over the next year. Uh, let's look at sales growth. You know, again, healthcare, top performing, uh, you know, top performing sector for sales growth this year expected by, by uh, analysts. And in fact, if we look here, the change uh, it today, you know, currently analysts expect 9.2% sales growth for stocks in the uh, in the sector, in the healthcare sector, right? 
as of December, they all, they were only expecting 8.9%, right? So that earnings picture, that earnings outlook for stocks in the healthcare sector is getting better, you know, and, uh, and, and it's outperforming all of these. So I would really want to look at stocks in the healthcare sector because, you know, why are they, why are they lagging the market so much? If, uh, if analysts expect the earnings and the sales to be so good this year. So maybe just a little bit of a market disconnect. Now, within any of these sectors, obviously you gotta look at the different industries within each. Uh, and I think that's part of the story here with healthcare. I mean, with healthcare, you've got a lot of those biotech stocks, those those pharmaceutical stocks that have been hit along with tech and, and along with uh, communication services, consumer discretionary, because you know, like we've talked about uh, in the past, that that interest rate story that's really hitting the market right now is all about higher interest rates mean, you know, when you look at these stocks and you look at their future cash flows, right? And you try to find a fair value, a present value of those stocks, of those future cash flows, then as the interest rate increases and you discount those future values to a present value today, then obviously, you know, the higher the discount rate, the higher the interest rate, then the lower the present value. The less those stocks are worth, those companies are worth, if their if their revenue or if their uh, their sales and their profits are so far out in the future. And that's what you get with a lot of these biotech stocks, right? They're they're developing the next big breakthrough, the next big blockbuster drug, but those sales and those earnings are way out into the future. So to find the present value of those, you have to discount them at a higher rate now with the interest rates going up, and that's why those stocks are going down. That's why tech stocks are going down, right? So that's some of the reason why uh, you know healthcare has lagged uh, the rest of the sectors over the last you know three six months, um, but you know there's there's still a lot of great companies in the healthcare sector, equipment makers, uh, services facilities, things like that that are going to be booking higher earnings, you know higher sales, and uh, and have lagged the market. So that's really where, where you want to look when you're looking at these. Um, some of the other ones that you might you might look at. You know, uh, some of the real, some of the ones get really hit this year. Uh, analysts are expecting energy companies, industrial, consumer discretionary, a lot of these companies to actually post negative earnings growth. Uh, you know, for this for this year, uh, and, and actually that's uh, that's last year, fiscal 2020. Um, so you know what what their earnings picture is, and, and you can compare these to. Uh, they'll give you 2021. Okay, so uh, we'll go. 2021 is down here. Okay, so that was that was last year. You know where those are, uh, and then here we got the the first quarter. So where analysts expect this first quarter earnings to be, and you can look at some of these. Uh, here's healthcare with a 19.8 percent expected uh, expected uh, earnings growth and expected sales growth here uh, for this first quarter, and you can just kind of look through these. Uh, consumer discretionary, you know, first quarter of uh, of the year tends to be pretty weak. For uh, for consumer discretionary stocks, right? These are all the things you know, clothes and uh, you know, uh, consumer uh, consumer tech. A lot of the stuff that you really don't need to buy, but you buy anyway because you love it. Uh, usually, first quarter is a, is a tough quarter for those companies, right? Because they've just come off of the the hot holiday shopping season, uh, all of that. But here we see, you know, compared to last year's pandemic first quarter, uh, we see analysts expect ninety two percent earnings growth for companies in consumer discretionary. So obviously very optimistic, you know, uh, very much a, a turnaround year for consumer discretionary. So you can look at these uh, and, and that's the the going to be the earnings growth and the revenue growth for the first quarter. Now you're also going to see the full year, okay, which uh, so current year 2021, where do analysts see the earnings growth and the uh, and the sales growth for these? And I know this is a lot of, uh, this, is, this is a lot to look through, a lot of uh, analysis to look through, but but really this is what you have to do if if you want to be ahead of the uh, the trend in the market. Okay, uh, the market, the collective wisdom of of investors and the market, it's always going to bake in all the information we currently have, right? And even a lot of the expectations for the future. So what you want to do with these charts, and, and what I try to do is I look at these charts and, and I see, okay, you know, where's the disconnect in the market? Where's the disconnect between? what uh, people are expecting, what analysts and investors are expecting, and where do I think it's going to be different, you know, and, uh, and where is the surprise going to be in the market? And that's where the market, that's where, that's where your returns are going to be. You know, so, so some of the things, I, especially this year, some of the things I'm looking for is which uh, sectors are most affected by, those, uh, by inflation, by higher rates, 
you know, does the market think that, that rates are going to moderate, that rates aren't going up quite as much because I think rates are going to go up quite a bit more. And we'll get to talking about that uh, here pretty soon and why I think this week could be ex exceptionally bad. Uh, which, uh, you know, where does the market think inflation is going to be and how is that going to affect some of these, right? So so right now the market is ex expecting inflation right around 2 to 2.5%, two right, over the next five years, okay? You can actually see market expectations for inflation. Uh, it's it's the difference between, uh, you know, the uh, the treasured, the, the, the protected securities, the inflation protected securities, the tips, and the, uh, the, uh, the, the nominal rate. Uh, and, and the market isn't really expecting inflation to be that bad over the next five years, even over the next year, uh, which, you know, I think it's going to be much worse than the market expects. So what I want to do when I look at these, these the profit margin, the uh, expectations for a lot of these charts is which ones are underestimating uh, inflation rates and that kind of thing. So I want to do uh, the last couple of charts here, and then I want to talk about, uh, you know, where really where the market is going this week and, and why I think it could be a, a bad week. For uh, for the markets, um, another one here that uh, that I want to highlight is uh, is one that I've actually used on the uh, on the chart quite a bit, and I think it's quite it's usually quite a bit further down here. Uh, this is okay. Here we are. This is this sector sector level forward twelve month PE ratios. Okay, and, and all you out there in the nation, you you recognize this chart because I love using this chart. It's one of my favorite ones here, um, and what this shows is. Okay, so the dark blue bar is the uh, the forward PE ratios. And what that is, is just the price of all the stocks in that sector. Okay, so the sector average for the price divided by what analysts expect earnings per share to be over this next uh, over this next month, right? Or over this next year, excuse me. Um, so for example, in the, the consumer discretionary sector, and that's the blue bar, that's the dark blue bar. The, the lighter blue bar is gonna be the five-year average and the green bar is a little bit longer term 10 year average here. So what we're looking at here, so uh, stocks in the consumer discretionary sector, okay, so all of your retailers, your clothing, uh, your apparel, uh, things like that. Right now, the stocks in that sector, in the S&P 500, are trading at 34.9 times on a price to, to forward earnings basis, okay? You take the price of, of all the stocks in that sector, divide by the earnings that analysts expect over this year. And, and remember, this year is supposed to be a great year for a consumer discretionary stocks, great year for, for earnings. But even as high as the uh, the earnings they're expecting this year, those stocks are still trading for 34.9 times on that uh, that forward price to earnings basis, okay, which is actually, you know, well, well above the 10 year average. If we look at this 10 year average, uh, 34 divided by 19.7. And that's, uh, you know, that's about 50% there. 34.9 divided by 19.7, uh, 77, excuse me, 77%. Uh, so, so stocks in that sector, you know, the sector as a whole, are trading 77% more expensive than they did, uh, they have over that over that 10 years, right? Uh, so m very, very high valuations there. Now, you know, you've got to ask yourself, okay, is, uh, is earnings, are earnings going to be better than expected for these stocks? Are they going to be able to surprise on the upside and continue doing that to support these, uh, this valuation, to support those, those stock prices? Um, you look at some of these other ones, that information technology, you know, 25.4, uh, 25.4 divided by a longer term average of 16.5 is 54% over the, the long run average there for, for tech stocks. So very much uh, expensive sectors, okay? And, uh, and you know, uh, you don't have to be a value investor to kind of look at this and say, okay, you know, which of the sectors that I wanna be in, where, where are the sectors that are maybe a little bit more opportunity uh, here, maybe not quite so highly uh, high valuations. Um, next, also though, you wanna look at, okay, that interest rate story, because right now, it is all about interest rates. It is all about uh, you know how high interest rates go and how that's going to affect the uh, the discounted uh, present value of those stocks. Okay, so any of these stocks in those high PE uh, those high PE sectors, consumer discretionary, information technology, consumer uh, best known for that, or, or really the hardest hit in that, uh, those are trading at very high PE ratios, and, and those higher interest rates are going to hit those stocks. Are going to continue to hit those stocks. If interest rates keep on uh, keep on rising, which again is just something you have to make uh, you have to make an informed uh, you know decision a research decision uh, whether you think uh, those uh, you know whether you think the interest rates are going to keep on going and uh, and what that's going to do. 
Okay, it looks like I'm getting a little bit of problem with the uh, with the, the the feed and the live stream. Uh, see if uh, let me know if you can if you're still if you're still there if uh, if you're still getting that uh, getting that stream coming through. All right, cool. All right, so so sorry about that. Live streams uh, is kind of the, the the game you play with live streams. Uh, so okay, so so we've got that sector level forward PE ratios. Uh, now I want to do one more the one more chart here. Uh, and then we'll cover, you know, why I think this week could be a, could be exceptional, exceptionally bad, and uh, and what to do about it really. So we've got uh, we've got here, we're coming down here, and this is the chart that we looked at last week. Uh, this is it's usually about the last chart here in the, uh, you know, in the fact set, and. Uh, all right, so this is the uh, the sector level bottom up target price versus closing price, and again, those are those biotech stocks in healthcare. They expect those to come back over the rest of the year, right? And that's what you see. Those these first four, uh, you know, these first four blue bars here, are uh, are the the target or the the expected return on stocks in those sectors. Uh, analysts are expecting about a twenty percent return on stocks in the information technology sector, sixteen uh, percent for healthcare, sixteen percent for communication or consumer service consumer discretionary and 15% for communication services, right? So, uh, and that's really based on that, you know, that I'm going to get too much worse that these, and, uh, you know, if you come over here to the to clear to the right and you see uh, what sectors uh, analysts expect to lag for the rest of the year, you really get the opposite of that, right? You get financials, industrials, materials, uh, really, you know, even energy over here with 12.2%. Uh, but they only expect financials to to do another two percent higher for the rest of the year, you know. And this is based on again that idea that these sectors have gone up so fast and so far in that reflation trade. You know, as interest rates rise, as inflation expectations rise, uh, analysts only expect so much out of these, uh, you know, out of these sectors. So again, you know, what what do you think? Do you think that? Uh, that these that interest rates are going to continue to rise. Do you think we're going to get higher inflation? And if so, you know this would be wrong. This is something you would want to look at and say, okay, well, uh, you know, I think I think uh, financials, industrials, materials, and energy will continue to outperform uh, because you know I, I think this uh, this thesis is uh, about the market is wrong. I think the analysts are wrong here, uh, and, and I think you can make some good money as inflation as as interest rates surprise higher. So uh, what we want to do now is I want to bring it back to that idea that uh, that this week could be could be even worse. Okay. So what we've got, uh, you know, so so honestly, interest rates really all that matters right now. Uh, until interest rates stabilize or, or come down, uh, that's the sole focus of the market is going to be on interest rates, how fast they're rising, you know, uh, whether they're rising. And how that's going to hit a lot of these high PE stocks, these high PE sectors, and these growth stocks. Okay, so uh, you know, really, what's what's going to happen this week is a lot of things, a lot of inflection points uh, that that could drive those rates up. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about uh, some some research by Ned Davis Research uh, that was in our uh, we highlighted that first in the newsletter in the Daily Bowtie newsletter. So make sure you're signed enough for that so you can get the uh, get the word on those uh, faster. Uh, but we did that, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. And we highlighted that, and they they actually estimated that if interest rates, if the the yield on the ten year bond, right, the year ten year treasury, if those interest rates go up to two percent by about mid year, tech stocks could fall another ten percent, right? And uh, you know, ten percent might not sound too bad, but if you look at, uh, you know, if you look at what some tech stocks, you know, those high growth, those high beta names like like Tesla. Like uh, Teladoc, like uh, CRISPR, those those high beta, those high PE stocks. Look at what those did when the Nasdaq fell 10%. You know, those were down 20 or 30 or 40%, right? So Ned Davis here is saying that tech stocks could fall. Generally, the broad uh, the broad tech stocks could fall another 10%. You know, what does that do to the, a lot of those stocks that that a lot of investors are holding? Okay. So uh, so again, you know, we've got a lot of inflection points around the uh, the the interest rates this this week, okay? And one of the biggest 
is uh, what's called the treasury auctions, right? So understand when the government needs to raise money, right? It can't just print money to pay for $1.9 trillion in stimulus. It can't just print money to, uh, you know, to pay for all this stuff. It actually has to, you know, sell bonds, collect cash, you know, from, from investors. And then it uses that money to pay for all this stuff, right? It pays that money to, to pay for the government deficit, uh, you know, between tax revenues and, uh, and what it's spending. So what it does, the government will come out of the treasury, right? The treasury will come out, you know, a couple days a week and they'll have auctions for their bonds. They'll sell maybe seven year bonds or five year or whatever duration they're going to sell. Uh, and they'll sell those, those bonds that week, that week. And uh, what happens, a lot of what affects interest rates is the supply and demand of those bond auctions, right? So what's happening this week is we've got three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, where the treasury is trying to sell a combined $183 billion in bonds, okay? So for this week, you know, the treasury, you know, to, to pay for government spending, to pay for that upcoming $1.9 trillion, all the checks that went out, the, the treasury has to sell $183 billion in bonds to collect the cash and pay for all that stuff, right? Uh, so, you know, what happens is, uh, you know, is there the demand for that? Uh, are there going to be enough investors to buy all those bonds and at what interest rate, you know, because the lower, the lower interest rate uh, or the lower, the lower demand for uh, investors have for those bonds, you know, I mean, the market just can't soak up that much bonds, $183 billion in bonds. There's just not enough investors and not enough investor money for it. Right. So as that demand kind of, kind of weakens, kind of goes down, then the treasury has to offer higher rates on those. The rates on those uh, on those bonds have to go up, and that's what that's really what we're seeing. You know, a couple of weeks ago, when uh, when uh, the ten year went up like six percent in a day, and stocks sold off by two or three percent, then um, you know that was that was because of a bad seven year auction. There was uh, the 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 treasury tried selling something like seventy two billion dollars in seven year bonds. The demand just wasn't there. You know, there weren't enough investors, wasn't enough investor money. And so those rates went up, you know, and, and so you look at this week, three days, $183 billion. And, uh, and it's just going to keep on continuing. You know, every week we're going to have, have hundreds of billion, billions of dollars of treasury bonds, uh, trying to be sold through an auction. And, uh, you know, some days there's going to be enough demand. There's going to be a uh, good demand for, for those bonds. And, and, you know, interest rates might come down a little bit, but the real risk is, is just to, to, to lower demand, lower demand. And, and really that surprise shock in lower demand, and, and it's going to cause higher rates. So that's three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday that could be, could be bad for, for investors. You know, it might not all three of them be bad, but, but at least one of those days could be very bad. Um, another couple of days, uh, Chair Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, uh, is going to speak on Monday to the, uh, the Bank of International Settlements. He's going to speak Tuesday and Wednesday to Congress, uh, and he's going to have to he's going to have to talk about inflation. He's going to have to talk about higher rates and stuff like that. Treasury Secretary Yellen, she's talking to Congress on Wednesday, and uh, you know why this is a problem is because. You know, these people, they're, they're, they're trying to talk down rates. They're trying to say, you know what, we're not going to raise rates. Uh, inflation isn't a problem, but, you know, they can't fight the, they can't fight the data. OK, eventually uh, Chair Powell has to recognize, eventually uh, T Treasury Secretary Yellen has to recognize that that inflation is going to be increasing. You just can't force, you know, five trillion dollars into an economy of 22 trillion and expect not, don't expect higher prices. OK. Now, of course, you know, the narrative, the story they've been giving lately is, oh, it's just going to be short term inflation, right? We're going to have inflation this year, but then it's going to it's going to come down after, uh, you know, after this year. Uh, well, you know, there's there's a point where the market gets tired of that story, gets tired of that narrative and doesn't believe it. And that's when you really see interest rates start start go heading higher when the uh, you know, the market sees sees inflation as more of a longer term problem and uh, and starts bidding up those rates. Uh, finally, Friday, we've got the PCE inflation report, right? And this is the core inflation report followed by the Fed, uh, you know, for where it, it puts its target. Okay, the Fed, uh, the Fed is saying it's going to tolerate inflation, uh, consumer inflation above 2%, right? Its target is 2%, but they're going to say, okay, you know what, inflation can head a little bit higher, no big deal. Uh, and, and we won't, we won't raise rates. Well, eventually, and you know, with the, the February storms and the outages in Texas and and a lot of those, uh, a lot of that stuff, 
you know, inflation has been pretty weak over the last month. Uh, the, the consumer price uh, report it was, was pretty weak, came in under expectations. Uh, but eventually you get the snapback. You get this $1.9 trillion in stimulus that's out being spent. You get the $405 billion in checks and those $1,400 checks that are going out right now. All of that's spent. You get people getting out of their house and, and they're spending money. And eventually we're going to have a surprise PCE inflation report. Uh, might not be this Friday, but maybe next month. Uh, we're going to get a surprise inflation report that is really going to drive rates higher. So really, you've got uh, three, you know, you've got three, six, seven, seven points, seven events this week that could spark rates higher. Uh, and that's why, you know, I think just any one or two of those hits and it could, uh, you know, it, it could drive the markets. It could make for a painful week in the in the stock market. So, uh, you know, just something to think about uh, if you're, uh, you know, if you're still in, especially some of those high PE ratio growth stocks and and some of those stocks the sectors that are getting hit hardest. Something to think about for this week. All right, um, you know, I want to head turn it back over to question and answer now.